Hi, I'm Kara, and welcome to People Will Talk TV, a revolutionary show where you get to see what goes on behind the scenes of your favorite local businesses and organizations. You'll meet the people behind the businesses and organizations and learn more about how they make a difference in our community. Plus, you'll get to hear from people just like you who are impacted by the work that they do. Today we're going to check out some of the area's hidden gems like a local organization that has been serving the needs of our area's homeless, poverty-stricken and addicted for almost 130 years. Next we'll highlight an organization focused on developing values and good character in the children of Maryland. Then we'll take a look at the new Maryland Bible Society. Helping Up Mission is one of Baltimore's oldest and largest nonprofit organizations. Their story began almost 130 years ago in 1885 when they opened their doors to feed and house the city's poor and homeless. Today on average, these men served by Helping Up Mission have struggled over two decades of substance abuse, often leading to incarceration and homelessness. Helping Up Mission works to transform the lives of the people that they serve. They have successfully helped thousands of people regain their purpose, hope, and independence. Let's take a look at how they are working to heal homelessness and addiction in our community. In 1990, I lost my son. 1995, I lost my sister. Then I lost my mother and my father. And from there on out, it was just, that active addiction just occupied my life. I got sober back in 1980, and I had a year. And at the end of the celebration that night with everybody in AA and all that, I decided to go out and celebrate on my own. I bought myself a drink, and it took me 30 years to put that drink down. Helping Up Mission is a Christian faith-based nonprofit organization and our mission here is to bring hope to the homeless and we do the, that through programs that meet the physical, psychological, spiritual, social needs of the men that we serve. Then they come together here as a family under a blanket of love and compassion and structure and discipline to rebuild their lives. Helping Up Mission is a place that you can come with nothing and receive everything. It's an all-inclusive, um, holistic approach. This place gives you an option to stay after you graduate. And the other recovery center in Baltimore City, the day you graduate is the day you leave. Helping Up Mission was started in 1885. And it was started by a Methodist pastor who post, in post-Civil War days, uh, when, when there were a lot of social problems here in the city, uh, came, left his parish, uh, came down in the city and just started helping people who needed help on the streets. Uh, today, uh, since we've developed our spiritual recovery program, we are now serving 500 men uh, residing on this block. Twelve years ago, um, I was homeless. Uh, I learned about this uh, facility in, in jail. came here um, and uh, found God, found Myself. We saw that the homeless men that were coming here were struggling with a drug and alcohol addiction and that if we didn't address that, then we were not really bringing hope to the homeless. So we set out to build a, a really quality drug recovery program that was based on Christ and the spiritual. Religious people find God so they don't go to hell and I think spiritual people find God so they don't have to go back. And that's what this place has kept me. I have hope that I don't have to go back to the person I was when I got here. Um, right before I ended up here, I was living underneath a bridge um, in a tent, um, stealing everything I could do to get the fix. I don't know, I just spiritually, mentally, and through alcohol physically started to break down. Then my mother died and I just went downhill with my drinking. I drank, drank every day, every day, every day. Everything I had, everything I was, was gone. I was a shell of myself. 
because I used to be somebody when I was out there, and I slowly drank it away. Uh, I was addicted to oxycodone and heroin, and um, I lost my job. First time I had ever been fired from a job. I remember the day I got here, and, and I didn't think it would work. I just was needed a place to stay, and I had no other place to go. And after I got here, after about two months it took me, after I got here, things started happening, and I started getting my life back. Helping Up Mission saves lives. Um, miracles happen here every day. This is the place that miracles happen every single day. And it's thanks for, for the donors and the volunteers and, and the staff and everyone who, who a client at the mission also works at the mission. We, we help run the mission. And that's what it's all about. One, one addict helping another addict. One thing I like to say to the guys is that, you know, it's as strong as you are, a lot of us volunteers aren't as strong as the guys that are in the trenches. I love being here. I, I see these men who are giving it their all to try to overcome their addictions. I just want to help them. The, the real soldiers, the real warriors, are the ones that they get in the trenches with you and say, don't give up. And that's what Helping Up Mission does. It, they, they get down in the trenches with the guys and and it, it brings them up. The uh, staff and their willingness to sacrifice daily, that, that, that's a great motivation for, for me because they don't have to come. When I came in here, it was just like a remarkable turnaround in my life. It just changed me. I got people in my life that helped me out. I work in the kitchen at night, so I serve. I serve the guys in the program. Um, I also serve the overnighters, which that come off the street, and we help them. We give them shelter, clothes. The ultimate goal of the programs is for men to experience enduring change that lasts a lifetime. I think the 12 months is essential. I look back and I wasn't ready at six months, even though I thought I was. I've worked on several projects while I've been here on the mission, whether it was a um, an audio video club I've been working on, giving back in a way where I can help uh, guys work toward their um, educational goals. They give these gentlemen a new smile um, on many levels, you know, a new smile coming from the inside and also a new smile for those that actually need a new physical smile. I want to thank Ms. Kim Lewis who dedicates um, a significant amount of her time with the guys in the choir. We get to uh, come in there and it's a warm atmosphere, um, share your stories with the, with the guys, um, travel to different churches and give a little thanks and praise back to God and to the communities that support the mission. Giving of funds is, is necessary and, and please, by all means, volunteer your time, volunteer your money, volunteer your resources, whatever it may be. Helping Up Mission helps hundreds of men each and every year helps them rebuild their lives. It has brought me great joy to be able to give to the Helping Up Mission. And I think everyone should give to help these men start over and have a new life. If you call up an act of addiction, you're gonna suffer for the rest of your life. But me, I choose not to suffer no more. And that's only one thing you have to do. Choose to say yes and not no to yourself. And choose life. And at the Helping Up Mission, it's, it's a guarantee, it's a guaranteed fact that you will find your life. Helping on mission has given me value back into my life. Value with a contact for a higher power. Value for my family and value for my friends. And most of all, value for my own life. It, it's given me a new purpose in life. It's given me another reason to live. And now today, I'm happy to say my mom calls me son. And my brothers and sisters call me brother and my daughter calls me dad. And that's something I thought I'd never get back, and so that's hope. Helping Up Mission provides hope to the poor and homeless. They do this through programs designed to meet their individual, physical, psychological, social, and spiritual needs. It's amazing that Helping Up Mission is able to offer comprehensive services for the poor, addicted, and homeless. Each year, they provide over 365,000 meals, and each night, over 500 men reside at the mission. But I was really impressed with their long-term spiritual recovery program, which has really made a positive change in the lives of the participants, their families, 
and their communities. And you can be part of this life-saving work. If you would like to become a volunteer or donate to Helping Up Mission, call them at 410-675-HELP or visit their website at helpingupmission.org. When we come back, we're going to take a look at an organization who has been dedicated to teaching boys and girls about good character, values, and the Bible for over 75 years. But first, let's take a look at the Bill Collector. If he gives you any trouble, any trouble at all, kill him. For Peter to pay Paul, well, there's the devil to pay. It may not be too late. Welcome back to People Will Talk TV. Child Evangelism Fellowship is a Bible-centered, worldwide organization. Since its beginning, the ministry has grown into the largest evangelistic outreach to children in the world. CEF is currently ministering in over 185 countries and in every state in the USA. CEF of Maryland is a growing ministry with a goal of establishing after-school good news clubs in every elementary school across the state. Let's take a look at how CEF is reaching children in Maryland. The Good News Club is a club that meets every Thursday here at the school, and it meets with those families that want their children to be a part of not just the secular world, but a little bit of let's say character education, things that are going to help our children to love one another, to respect one another, and those good values that we hope all of our children will achieve. On June 11 in 2001, we were given the opportunity as Christians to go into the public school and actually reach the children with the gospel. Many pastors don't know about it. Many of the people that are involved in our schools don't know about it, but it's an opportunity through the equal access ruling of the Supreme Court to reach out and touch the lives of children. I myself was a Good News Clubber many, many years ago, but it was the Good News Club that gave me a foundation in my spiritual life. As a pastor, you're always looking for ways to um, get outside the church and reach out to the, com to the community. And a Good News Club is a way for us to go out into the community and build those bridges and go into the local elementary schools and uh, share the good news with the kids. And um, CEF is a wonderful tool that we use to do that. The mission of Child Evangelism Fellowship is basically, first of all, to make sure they're discipled in the Word of God, and then to establish them and their families in the local Bible-believing church. The most important thing to me is that we would share the good news with others. And without question, the child is the one who benefits the most from the message of salvation. And so I'm very passionate about CEF for that reason, because the children are the future. We never know how things affect children, but we do know that whenever positive things are brought to children, and when positive teachings are brought to children, it rubs off. I feel that the children who are in the Good News Club might be a little kinder. Tomorrow, if they come across a situation, they might view it a little differently with a bigger heart. And these kinds of teachings and these kinds of principles rub off on them, and they're better children and better people in the world because of it. A lot of these children don't, don't normally come to church, so they can hear about God in their school. Um, and I think that's just a wonderful thing to be able to do. I love it because you get, you get to sing songs and talk about God. The key is when they come to Good News Club, they know that they are loved. And that's, that's the key. And that's how I look at Good News Club. I want to make sure those kids that come in, they know they are truly loved. So often 
we isolate our children in terms of seeing them in a one-dimensional manner. The school, basically for academics. No, I think there's a missing element and that has to do with character. And through the Word of God, we can touch children and have a part in shaping and molding children in the arena of character. And the parents are very thankful for an opportunity for their children uh, to learn about the Lord uh, after school. And they often come up and thank us and, and tell us how happy they are their children can be a part of this club. First, I didn't know what good news was, but when my daughter said, Mommy, we're learning about the Bible, we're learning about God, I'm like, that's excellent. It should be in all schools. To me, if our kids, our Christian kids, are going to be successful uh, in middle school, high school, and college, they're going to need a good, strong foundation because the world is always bombarding them with different ideas and different things that really don't fit into our category, the way of living of Christ's life. It teaches them about God and it teaches them about Jesus. They get to sing, um, they learn scriptures, and some children aren't learned at home. They can come home and tell their parents and they can learn about the good news of Jesus. It's really fun because we get to learn more about God. I think the Good News Club is a really good place here at Leaf Walk Elementary, and I think I will always come here every Thursday to learn more about God and more Bible verses. Even though the message of the gospel is free, it costs money to carry the message. And so what we must do then is give. And Clearview Baptist Church of Randallstown, we're a partner with CEF, and so we monthly give a generous donation and we've agreed to do this every month for every year we'll exist um, so that they can continue to provide for free the message of the gospel and the materials. Children all over Maryland are waiting to hear the good news of the gospel. There's so much at stake. You can volunteer in a public school in a good news club immediately after the bell rings or you can invite your pastor to be involved and ask them to adopt a public school and to be a part of the ministry of reaching the boys and girls in our schools. And third, you can give so that more children will become spiritual champions. Good News Club is very special. You should come to Good News Club because you can learn about God and it's really fun. I like the people who come to Good News Club. They're very nice. It's great. I really like it a lot. I love Good News Club. As you can see, CEF of Maryland is helping to develop biblical values, integrity, and good character in the children that they serve. They need help from people like you who care about the future of children in Maryland. To volunteer or donate, call 410-944-6435 or send an email to info at cefmaryland.org. To learn more about CEF of Maryland, go to cefmaryland.org. When we come back, we're going to take a look at an organization whose roots go back to the early 1800s and can claim some of Baltimore's historic who's who on their list of members. But first, let's take a look at the City of David. From the producer who brought you Discoveries of Israel, along with other inspirational films, DBM Films now brings you the biblical archaeological discovery of City of David. In this program, we will go to the depths of Jerusalem to uncover many holy sites. Pastor Hagee with Doran Spillman of I.R. David Foundation brings you the ancient holy city like you've never seen it before. It is one thing to read the Bible, but another to see it come to life in City of David. Welcome back to People Will Talk TV. For over 200 years, the mission of the Maryland Bible Society, or MBS, has been to see that every individual has an opportunity to own a Bible, regardless of their native language or financial situation. Today, MBS is turning their emphasis to encouraging and helping people read and understand the Bible. MBS is igniting fresh passion for God's Word by reaching out to churches, businesses, children, and youth through their partnerships. Let's take a look at how the MBS is igniting fresh passion for their new mission. Uh, 
in those beginning days, there was a desire to spread God's Word, to make sure that everybody had an opportunity to read it, to own one. And so that was our humble beginnings over 200 years ago. Maryland Bible Society, as an advocate for God's Word, is igniting fresh passion by engaging churches, children, youth, and workplace ministries, encouraging a deeper relationship with God through His Word so that we might know His transforming power and unsurpassing greatness. It's a wonderful, wonderful organization in that it is on neutral ground in the Christian community. The Maryland Bible Society is absolutely relevant to young people. The Maryland Bible Society is one of the oldest and most effective uh, Christian ministries in Maryland. Of course here we're down in Baltimore City today and when you think of Maryland Bible Society and the ministry that we have had for over 200 years, you think of distribution and we have always been about distribution of God's Word. But we've always been a lot more than just distribution. But we've always had some of the who's who of our republic. And it goes back to guys like John Jay, the original Supreme Court Justice, John Quincy Adams, James Fenimore Cooper, or Rutherford B. Hayes, and John Goucher, the founder of Goucher College. As over the years, we've really picked up a great collection. And so we have Bibles that go all the way back to the original King James Version of 1611. We have the first Bible that was ever produced in Baltimore. We have a lot of Bibles that were given out during the Civil War. We are a special organization in Christianity and that we have a unique purpose and that God has ordained us for that purpose. Maryland Bible Society has picked three primary platforms that we believe we're gonna build the next generation of ministry from our perspective, and that would be the church as a resource to the church to play a part in what is happening among the next generation of young people and thirdly, to be part of workplace evangelism. God gave us life to enjoy. Now, if we don't enjoy life, there's something missing. We've forgotten how to enjoy it, so we better tune in with the person who gave us life in the first place, and you'll find everything we ever need in, in the Scriptures. So the Maryland Bible Society, the easy part is to make Bibles available, to make God's Word available for their needs. But more importantly, we see that we're partnering with churches to teach discipleship programs to help people find ways to get into God's Word and not just own one, but they would fall in love with the Scripture and ultimately want them to fall in love with God Himself. And it all comes through the reading and the studying uh, and the enjoyment of the Holy Scriptures. Christians should seek to excel in business as a testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to help business people get a grasp of their identity, their incredible design, and also what does that look like as it plays out in everyday life. Christians in business face difficult issues. They have to make hard decisions. And, and you look to the Bible, you look to other Christians, and the Christians at Maryland Bible Society are a great place to look. Daddy, where did the Bible come from? Boy, that's a great question, Josh. So one of the things that we have really been excited about recently comes from a passage in the Old Testament in Judges 2.10. And part of that passage is so significant because when Joshua dies at the end of a generation, verse 10 of that chapter, chapter 2, says, the next generation after Joshua dies does not know the Lord. That passage has been a scary passage for many. We believe it's the impetus behind our youth generation movement. We believe that this is our call and that is to make sure that this generation does not forget who God is and to not know Him. We can count on that same God who was great in the David and Goliath story. He's also the same great God in our story. We're a ministry called Child Evangelism Fellowship. We're reaching out to the children in the local public schools. And then we go in and share the gospel with these children that otherwise would not be attending any churches. About 80% of the children within the public school will not go to church in their lifetime. Maryland Bible Society loves to get involved with partnerships and ministries that focus on the kids. We believe this is the generation that we do not want to lose. And so Beachmont Christian Ministries is one of those ministries that's right on the forefront of what God is doing. As a matter of fact, this year, we had over 1,700 kids come through Beachmont. When we're believers and we're Christians, we're believing and stating to the world that everything we have in our holy book, the Bible, is true. And if we're saying that all of that is true, it should radically affect the way we live our lives. He's changed everything about me. It's not just a history book. It's not just a moral book. It is God literally speaking to His people. When His Word breaks us to pieces and burns in us, that's what will start changing the culture. 
And so Maryland Bible Society, by providing the Bibles, allows these children to get the Word of God, to memorize scripture, to learn the Bible stories, and learn how to get a biblical worldview. It can change our whole society. What is God's agenda and how do we become a part of that? And that process and that philosophy has led us to some really exciting partnership with groups like Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Youth for Christ, Child Evangelism Fellowship, Christian Business Men's Committee, and the, the Christian Professional Network. And the list goes on. The, foundationally, where they come from is standing on God's Word and the principles we believe are taught there. And so we said we want to be part of that. See, we're excited to see what would happen in the workplace, in the home, in relationships, as God's Word transforms lives. We're 100% committed to this. We're passionate for this, but we need you to support us. We need you to be 100% committed. We need your time, your talents, your treasures. You can get involved in so many different ways, but we need you to join Maryland Bible Society today. Today, while many Bible societies are closing their doors, MBS is renewing, re-engaging, and further expanding its horizons. MBS is working hard to keep up with our changing culture. You can even get a digital version of the Bible on your phone. MBS not only delivers Bibles to people in Maryland, they also deliver Bibles in many different languages to a diverse group of people throughout the world. MBS needs your financial support to continue funding their programs and grants, as well as their very active advocacy efforts. Please consider becoming an MBS supporter. Call 410-685-4040 or visit their website at mdbible.org backslash donations. I hope today's show gave you some fresh and unique looks at what people are talking about in and around Baltimore. Help us support our local organizations by making a phone call or going online to visit one of our guests' websites. If you missed any part of our show, you can go online to peoplewilltalktv.com to get more information. We hope we gave you something to talk about with your friends and family. We'll see you next time on People Will Talk TV. From the producer who brought you Discoveries of Israel, along with other inspirational films, DBM Films now brings you the biblical archaeological discovery of City of David. In this program, we will go to the depths of Jerusalem to uncover many holy sites. In this amazing look into City of David by Pastor Hagee, he interviews Doran Spillman of IR David Foundation. Together, they bring you the ancient holy city like you've never seen it before. Throughout the journey, Scott Watkins, a noted actor-historian, guides us through the Bible and many years of archaeology and history. Some of these explorations include King David's palace rooftop where he first saw Bathsheba, mother to King Solomon, Hezekiah's tunnel that was discovered by Eliot Mazar, and Solomon's colonnade where Pastor Hagee walks in the steps of Jesus. It is one thing to read the Bible, but another to see it come to life in City of David.